Recently on the channel, we made a video going over every single Pokemon that dies in the Pokemon anime, and even though it's kind of a very, very disturbing topic because you're talking about these magical creatures dying, you guys still seem to enjoy it, and I did say I would go over every character that dies in the anime if you guys wanted me to, and you sure as heck did. So in today's video, we're going to be going over every single character that dies in the Pokemon anime. Be sure to leave a like down below if you're excited for this video, and also subscribe if you're brand new because I do daily Pokemon content on this channel. But without further ado, let's get into the video and take a look at some more disturbing deaths in the Pokemon anime. So starting things off, we have Sir Aaron. I'm sure you guys all know about this. We obviously went over his Lucario in the last video. But of course, Sir Aaron bit the dust as well early on. So before he died to stop the war, he sent a message to Lucario using the time flow saying he was a friend who did not want Lucario to share the same fate he suffered. Aaron said, Aura is with me and restored Mew's power by sacrificing himself. So that's how he died. He sacrificed himself to restore Mew's power. But then Lucario was like, why are you just leaving me to die or whatever? You ditched me. I thought we were friends. But of course that wasn't the case and then when Ash and the gang sorted it out You could see them both all good and happy in the afterlife But yes, Aaron did sacrifice himself to basically give Mew his power back And then of course Lucario kind of did the same thing thousands of years later Coming up next we have Ayla Now this is a person you probably don't know too much about But we did kind of go over a little bit in the last video because of the talent flame Anyway, Ayla first appeared when she was talking to Jeanne after their conversation, Jean rode off on his go-go soon after Yveltal showed up and threatened to attack her. Noticing this, Jean turned back and then commanded his Talonflame to attack it, which of course turned to stone. Talonflame kind of went onto the ground, smashed into a million pieces, is what we went over in the last video. But of course then, Yveltal fired another Oblivion Wing at Jean. Aelia jumped in front of him, however, and took the attack herself. This caused her to turn to stone as well. Jean would later put her petrified body in a cave to keep her safe, and it would stay there for many years until Professor Sycamore and Alexa discovered and examined her. So yes, this person also got turned to stone. It didn't shatter to a million pieces, but basically never came back to life, which is unfortunately the case for this character. Coming up next, we have a character again that you guys may not know about. It's Alex's grandfather, which is a character of the day who appeared in Taming of the Shroomish. So Alex's grandfather lived in a mansion called the Green Lodge, set amongst trees in Rinson Town. Alex retained many fond childhood memories of playing with his grandfather and the many Shroomish that lived there. However, after he passed away, the Shroomish seemingly disappeared from the area and Rinshin Town became the urban city it is today. So basically not a huge character, but it is still a character that passed away, which is why I wanted to include it in this video. Coming up next, we have Amber, another character you might not know about, but Amber is actually the daughter of Dr. Fuji, who died while she was still a child. She first appeared in the Birth of Mewtwo radio drama released in CD format exclusively in Japan, and then in the uncut story of Mewtwo's origin short, which was added to the beginning of Mewtwo Strikes Back in all television airings in Japan, and into the Japanese home video releases from the third one onward. And of course, that is where we got the starter Pokemon kind of clones as well, which we went over in the last video as well. But yes, Amber is the daughter of Dr. Fuji, who unfortunately passed away as a small child. Coming up next, we have Captain, who is from episode 95. Uh, he's basically just a former Orange League champion who won the event using his Ghastly and Haunter over 300 years ago. He used to sail a delivery ship going from island to island and delivering the things to other islands. One night, 300 years ago, the ship was caught in a terrible storm and sunk, and then we never saw him again, so we're kind of just guessing that he passed away with his Pokemon. Coming up next, we have Chapman, who is a character of the day who appeared in a watershed moment, and he is the grandfather of Henny. So Chapman, along with his chestnut and Robon, first appeared in a photograph Ash and his friends saw when they first came to Chapman Research Lab. He's basically just a character that got a, a pretty bad illness when he found out like, I have to save a forest and died from the illness. Kind of just a character that appears in flashbacks. We're going to have a few of those appear in this video because I didn't want to miss anyone out because then I would have got comments like, hey, you missed this character that only appeared for 0 0.7 seconds. What you're doing, your title says every. And I'd have been like, yeah, but he's kind of not really important. He's like, nah, he still died and you said every. So one of them. Anyway, Chapman passed away because of an illness. Next up, we have a Conley. Conley is a character of the day who appeared in Celebrating the Hero's Comet. So Conley was mentioned by Alexa in a book that was shown to Ash, Iris, and Seelan. Basically, just many years ago, he died. But again, still a character. It's basically just... A group of Pokemon were attacking some islanders. Conley arrived from across the sea to learn them to stop the mountain. When a comet came by, as he had the ability to determine when exactly the comet was going to pass by, the Pokemon rejected him and peace restored to the islands. Great. But of course, it was many years ago. He's dead now. Because it's like 500 years ago. Can't live past 500. Next up, we have Dr. Fuji. I'm not talking about the Dr. Fuji from the Origins or the games. I'm talking about the Dr. Fuji from the Mewtwo Strikes Back 
when Mewtwo strikes back, literally, he's in the kind of science room, he's getting created, and there's a big old explosion, killing Dr. Fuji and all the scientists, so Dr. Fuji's daughter passes away, so does Dr. Fuji as well, so it's not a great situation for this dude, but of course he looks completely different in Mewtwo Strikes Back than the actual origins. But hey, he passes away and Mewtwo strikes back. Next up, we have the Ghost of the Maiden's Peak. I am sure you've heard about this one on the very first series of the anime. So it's a character of the day and a spirit which haunts Maiden Peak. So in Ghost of the Maiden's Peak, Ash and his friends hear the legend about the beautiful Maiden and her devotion to the man she loved. As the story goes, over 2,000 years ago, 2,000 should I say, 2,000 years ago, this story's been telling. Basically, young woman lover was sent off to war, leaving her desperate for his return. While the days faded to years though, the maiden refused to give up hope and eventually had her body bodied to the peak upon which she stood. So she basically just died because, I, I guess of heartbreak maybe? And then she, like the ghastly goes around and tells a story. She still appears as a ghost, but yeah, so she, I'm pretty sure she just died of heartache or not eating or something like that. But yeah, she passed away because she was waiting for her love to come back and he never did he might have died at war who knows but she died as well coming up next we have gris or chris it, it sounds like chris but it's gris apparently it's g-h-r-i-s the spelling anyway gris is a character who appeared in hooper in the clash of ages he's Murray and basil's great grandfather in the english dub though he's not named and is only referred to as the traveler so 100 years ago when the horror city was still a small village hooper and bound appeared to the townspeople and granted them wishes in return for food that's a pretty good, I'd give my chocolate bar for a wish, I'm just saying. Anyway, the townspeople wanted to see it in battle, so they had Hooper battle strong Pokemon. Hooper eventually got carried away with fighting and started to summon legendary Pokemon like Regigigas, Reshiram, and Zekrom to test his strength. So there was just big old battles going on, nothing like that. Anyway, uh, he hid the prison bottle, sort of like sorting Hooper out, anything like that, and that's the whole prison bottle in the movie. And then it, it's kind of unclear why he passed away. Uh, but Grizz was noted by Baraz to have died somewhere prior to the events of Hooper and the Clash of Ages. Uh, both Baraz and Murray hoped that they had pleased him by bringing peace between Hooper's two forms and restoring its true power. So, yes, this is a character that passed away. It's just, we're not sure how, but he's dead, basically. So, yeah, he earned a spot in today's video, I guess. Next up, we have Godi, another minor character. It's just a guy that's seen in flashbacks in The Rise of Darkrai. He's the great-grandfather of Tonya, and he is the architect of the Space Time Towers. Again, we don't know why he died. He's just from years ago, because he's an old dude, and he's seen in photographs. He passed away because of ages ago. So, yeah, he earns a spot in today's video. Minor character, but died. Gets a spot. That's how it works, I guess. Nice. Coming up next, we have Gym Leader. Yeah, that, that's his name, just Gym Leader. Nothing afterwards, just Gym Leader. Unless he's first name Jim. Second name leader. That would be a good second name. Anyway, he's basically just a character of the day. Pretty minor. Uh, he appears in the Great Balls of Fire. As the title suggests, he was the original gym leader of the Blackthorn until his passing. He's just a dude that died ages ago because he's old. Just died of old age, I'm going to guess. But yeah, just a very minor character that did pass away. Next up, we have Jeanne, a character that we've heard a lot about. Obviously, his talent flame got turned to stone. Alien got turned to stone. And this dude basically just dies of old age. He's kind of like trying to find Xerneas to restore Alien and stuff like that. It doesn't go well and basically just dies of old age, I guess. Um, we're not really sure about it, but yeah, that's kind of how he dies. Next up, we have the King of Poke Lantis. You've probably heard about this dude because he takes over Ash's body. It was basically, he was a ambitious, selfish, and greedy king. And in his time, his main goal was to take over the world. According to the legend, the king attempted to use Ho's power to accomplish just that. As penance for this act, Ho-Oh destroyed the kingdom of Pokelantis. However, the king escaped and got his revenge by supposedly sealing ho -Oh in the stone orb that was shaped like a Pokeball. But yeah, he died ages ago. Even though he comes back kind of to take over Ash's body, he still died ages ago. Next up, we have King of the People of the Vale. Another king. He's a supporting character who appeared in flashbacks in White Victinian Zekrom and Black Victinian Reshiram. He lived 1,000 years ago. Just an old dude that died. But we see flashbacks of him. He's dead now. He's a character in the anime. He's dead. The title of the video says, Every character that died in the Pokemon anime, Sorted. Coming up next, we have Lacey, who appeared in XY014. Now, Lacey uh, basically just kind of got an Esper and stuff like that, and she's the grandma of Elise, I think, or something like that. And basically, Elise explained that Lacey had passed away and to this Esper who befriended Lacey. It's a bit of a sad story, to be fair, in like this mansion. But yeah, Lacey's like this sweet old grandmother, and she passes away, and then Esper's like, oh, going on there and she's like the granddaughter of Elise just another minor character kind of that passes away 
Coming up next, we have Lon. Now, Lon is a character who appeared over 200 years ago when he was a little boy and basically appears as like a ghost to like Ash and his friends and like that. Um, so yeah, that, that he's just a guy that died ages ago but appears as a ghost. So he's dead, he's a ghost. But yeah, that's just a character in the enemy that has passed away. Coming up next, we have Nicola. Again, another very minor appearance. And he's basically a character who appears in flashbacks in Volcanion and the Mechanical Marvel. He is just basically the scientist who created McGinn 500 years ago and obviously passed away because no one lives to 500, let's be honest, unless he's Superman or something like that. Next up, we have Olympica, a very minor character again. She's basically the person that tells Jan, look, Xerneas is going to sort this out. And he's like, I, and, but that was like years ago, so she probably died of old age. Next up, we have Queen Rin, who appeared again, just like Sir Aaron in Lucara and the Mystery of Mew. Uh, she was the queen of Rota during the time of Sir Aaron. However, times were not peaceful while she resided over the kingdom. Again, it was from like thousands of years ago, so she ain't gonna live to like 2000, let's be honest. She's just a character that passed away years ago. Coming up next, we have Tap. No, not your tap water, just Tap, T-A-P-P. Did PP get it? <laughs> anyway, it basically lived in the ancient past and served Marcus at the temple in Machina Town. Obviously, it's the ancient past, so Tap is passed away now. Next up, we have Veofum. He's a character of the day who appeared in Legend of X, Y, and Z. He was a selfish, ruthless, and greedy king who wanted the power of Xerneas so he could bring prosperity to his land. However, instead of flourishing it, the plant life in his kingdom wilted and the Pokemon began dying. Angered at this, he ordered the men to burn Xerneas. Yeah, literally burn Xerneas. Jan arrived and tried to stop Veofum from burning Xerneas, but he refused. Veofum ordered his men to get rid of Jan, when suddenly the legendary Pokemon Zygarde appeared. Zygarde used Lance Raft to destroy the kingdom, which, which led to the demise of Veofum and his henchmen. So yeah, basically gets killed by Zygarde. Great. Finishing things off though, as the last character that dies in the Pokemon anime is Pokemon Hunter J, who is a professional Pokemon thief who sells the targets to the highest bidder. At the end of uh, the needs of the three, her ship is hit by two future sight attacks, which cause it to explode and crash into the Lake of Valor, where it quickly floods. We do not see Jay escaping from the ship, nor any members of the crew, so it's basically suggested that they all perish in the crash. We don't see her survive, so we're just going to say that she's died. But with that, it does wrap up today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Really interesting to see all the different characters that have passed away in the anime. And of course, if you guys want to see more of these kind of videos where we look at Pokemon that have passed away and stuff, I think I'm going to do every Pokemon that's passed away in the games, uh, such as like the Volcarona and maybe Blue's Raticate. That's kind of a theory, but you know what I mean. So if you guys want to see that, be sure to hit the like button down below. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Ring the bell and be sure to check out the videos that are coming onto your screen in a second. Uh, but yeah, that is everything from me. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Have an amazing rest of your day. And until next time, Oh,